His Excellency Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, and welcome to the 48th Philippine Business Conference and Expo. To formally begin our program, may we call on the President of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. George T. Barcelon, to deliver his message. Excellency President Ferdinand E. Marcos Jr. Your Excellency, members of the Diplomatic Corps, honored guests, fellow PCCI members, and conference delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. First, let me thank you, Mr. President, for sharing your precious time to be with us today. We had very fruitful dialogues with members of your cabinet since yesterday, where we discussed the priorities of your administration and how we can join hands to reduce the incidence of poverty and to facilitate growth outside Metro Manila. We hope, Mr. President, to achieve this through our collaboration as your partner in development. We lost many opportunities during the pandemic. The Philippines was the fastest growing economy. Then and now, we must work harder to recover our losses. In your inaugural speech, Mr. President, you said, come. Let us put our shoulders to the wheel and give that wheel a faster turn to repair and to rebuild, to address challenges in new ways, to provide what all Filipinos need to be all that we can. You gave us the assurance that all will be well. We should not fear. As you unequivocally stated, Ang pangarap nyo ay pangarap ko rin. Since then, you have been reaching out not only to our people, but also to the international community in line with your policy to promote stronger and multifaceted relationships with all our partners around the world. We are happy for all your efforts to reboot and boost the economy, strengthen our ties with other countries, and promote investments to the state visits you have been conducting. We are grateful for your support to the business community. Your state visit benefits us. 
the promise of President Jokowi in Indonesia about coal supply and also urea is really a great help to the business community, especially to the agriculture. I am fortunate to have joined the business delegation that accompany you during this, your visit to the United States. And I saw firsthand your sincerity in seeking the unity and collaboration of all Filipinos in achieving a progressive economy so that poverty can be reduced and that no Filipino will go hungry. You have touched the hearts of our Kababayan with your hands-on approach. Like us, they are eager to do their part to support your development plans and programs for our country. Your visit to the key institutions like the New York Stock Exchange, the Asia Society, among others, allayed the fears of the American investors and gave them the confidence to trust in your administration. Your talk in the Manila Overseas Press Club assured the media that under your administration, the openness to constructive criticism is welcome. Your state visit have generated business deals and investment pledges worth billions in dollars. These visits strengthen our bilateral ties that promise more business collaborations and investment between our countries. You have placed the Philippines back in the radar of foreign investors. And Mr. President, we thank you for your great effort. Now that the pandemic has come to an end, we are now open for business and are optimistic that the economy under your leadership will rebound and achieve greater heights. We truly appreciate the thrust of your administration to support and develop the agriculture sector and the MSMEs, which are considered the backbone of our economy. The many initiatives you mentioned in your SONA, such as the construction of more farm to market roads, providing access to technology and finance to our farmers and MSMEs, providing connectivity among others, will go a long way in accelerating the development of the countryside and improving the quality of the life of our people. During the pandemic, business owners have relied on internet to market their products online. This underscored the importance of connectivity and the importance of finding a solution also to our power and energy solution so that we can address the hesitancy of investors to come to our shores. Fast-tracking the implementation of our infrastructure development will accelerate the development and growth of industries. In this, government resources will be supplemented through public sector and private sector partnership, or better known as PPP. Addressing this concern as soon as possible and implementing these initiatives that you mentioned gives us confidence that business will thrive and continue and flourish under your watch. All this is not just to create more wealth, but more importantly, provide more jobs for our people. Rest assured, Mr. President, of our full support and cooperation to your administration plan and actions to provide a better future for all of us. Thank you very much. Maraming salam po ngayong lahat. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas. The President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency, Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos, Jr. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Trade and Industry Secretary Fred Pascual, for your introduction. Please, uh, please be seated. The uh, Philippine Change Chamber of Commerce and Industry, President George Barcelon, the esteemed members of the Diplomatic Corps present with us here this evening, PCCI Council of Business Leaders, Chairman Jose T. Prado, 
Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry Chairman Dr. William Ko and PCCI Directors and Officers, Philippine Business Conference Chairman Mr. Ferdinand Ferrell, the Director, Treasurer and Honorary Chairman PCCI Mr. Sergio Ortiz Luis Jr., all the very distinguished guests who are here gathered for this evening's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I, uh, first of all, must congratulate the awardees that uh, we, for whom we have just recognized this, uh, the different chambers around the country and the different LGUs around the country. And I mention it specifically simply because I would like for those winners, those awardees, to understand that these awards are very important and that these awards signify your efforts to make your communities a faster growing, more progressive, more economically agile community in the face of our new global post-pandemic economy. So, in that sense, tama yung mga dala ninyong pala na napakalakas ang kanilang sigaw at palakpak dahil malaking kabuluhan ang inyong natanggap na mga award. The challenge over the last few years was striking a delicate balance between the economy and public health. But always putting an important premium on keeping our communities safe from another outbreak. With sure and steady steps, the government is now hard at work at recovering the many opportunities that we had lost prior to this global health crisis, while in the meantime also navigating the waters of what we have all come to call the new normal. In this journey, our business sector has always been recognized as an important partner and a source of new and bold ideas and how we can bounce back and prosper in the long run. I am very happy to be here with you today to join you on the 48th Philippine Business Conference and Exposition where policymakers, businesses, and industries can exchange ideas on current issues and business opportunities that we have ahead of us. I thank the PCCI for your continued commitment to support the government by voicing the interests and concerns of various businesses and the different sectors around the country. And we are very appreciative of the prepared resolution that you have made that embody the policy recommendations and proposed reform agenda from different sectors. I am much gratified that when I heard the enumeration of those 10 resolutions, that they are very much in line with the government's thrust and the government's directions that we, we feel will be the most advantageous for the Philippines. And in that regard, I assure you that the concerned agencies will assess the feasibility and probability of success of these recommendations. Of course, we recognize the fact that our businesses cannot thrive alone. Thus, it is my commitment to foster a sound environment where businesses can flourish and continue to be a driver of our economic growth. I reiterate my vision of improving our business climate and elevating the status of the Philippines as a top investment destination through various endeavors. As such, we continue to harmonize efforts of all investment promotion agencies, government agencies, and local government units to effect greater synergies. We also continue to help in the ease of doing business in the country. We're doing this by enhancing our digital infrastructure in order to streamline application processes of business permits, licenses, and other documentary requirements. Moreover, we are committed to developing our renewable energy sector to ensure adequate power supply and alleviate rising electricity costs. 
We do this by revising the renewable energy laws, implementing rules and regulations to secure energy supply in the country and attract foreign investment for renewable energy development. It is necessary that we make these changes because the technology for renewable energy has moved to, to forward so quickly that we have to catch up with our regulations, with our monitoring of our renewable energy sector. Last but certainly not least, we make a strong push towards infrastructure development with a special emphasis once again on public-private partnerships in key projects. As of August this year, we have already a total of 74 PPP projects in the pipeline with a combined estimated cost of 2.25 trillion pesos. But we must do more because we need more. I thus invite all of you to take part in the great enterprise of building our nation. These are just a few of the initiatives that this administration is pursuing to enhance the business environment, allowing the business sector to maximize the contribution to the revitalization of our economy. We will need to work together in coming up with more infrastructure projects, more energy projects, more projects for our MSMEs, more projects for agriculture, all that will empower and strengthen both our economy and our nation. Do know that the government is unwavering in its commitment to make the Philippines a viable option for businesses, both for local and foreign investors. Many times when we talk about new investment, the assumption is always that we are talking about foreign direct investment. Certainly, that is an important aspect of our development plans. However, what we sometimes have been missing, and I think it is something that we certainly recognize as a huge potential for the transformation of our economy, are the development of local markets. The Philippines is now 107 million in population, more or less. And that comprises a very large market that is undeveloped and with extremely, extremely good potential for strengthening and stabilizing our economy. And that is why we have tried to foster programs and projects that will shift the contribution to GDP not so dependent on the service side, but perhaps on also the manufacturing side. This will help us also in our trade. And as we all know, no country grew wealthy except for trade. And so that is why we feel that not only do we encourage foreign direct investment, not only do we encourage capital intensive investments in our country, but we also very much must understand that the key, the driving force to begin all of this will be the local investors, the local businesses, and the local private sector companies that come into partnership with government to find the synergy that we all need for this new Gov this new economy that we are facing. Rest assured that we always take the necessary steps to strengthen our relationship of our businesses with the government, with consumers and the general public. Because despite extensive disruptions that we had to endure in the past two years, it has always been the entrepreneurs and the business sector who have steadfastly steered our direction towards economic success. You are the nation's agents of creativity, innovation, and progress. From the people who take the helm of multinational companies that shape our global economy, to the entrepreneur determined to make a mark with a business, maybe a small business in the province, and to, be, to the persevering merchant that we encounter on the streets dreaming of a better tomorrow for their children. All of you, give us hope that we will, in the not-so-distant future, not only live in a country of opportunity, 
but also in a land of golden harvest and of plenty. Indeed, you will be the main driver of our success as we emerge from the setbacks posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, the shocks that the economy, the world economy has suffered in the past few months. Nonetheless, all the least we can face so long as we face them together in partnership. That is why I look forward to see you forge new ties here. And it is exciting to see the solutions that will, you will create to broaden our horizons ahead. One that will be teeming with opportunities that our people rightfully deserve. After today, once deals have been closed, policies have been agreed upon, and bonds have been renewed, forged, all of us can proudly tell the world, the Philippines is indeed open and ready for business again. Maraming maraming salamat at mabuhay po kayong lahat. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat.